In the second lesson, we will perform our morphing on the YouTube sign. We will prepare the sign, we will work with the mask and use the effect we need to achieve our morphing. Now we can start with the first one. Let's start by morphing the YouTube sign. And the thing that allows us to morph PNG images is actually an effect. I have forgotten about one thing, I should delete those keyframes, but we can also do this later. I hit the YouTube sign, I press M and I just deselect the keyframes. Deselect it like this. I click on the YouTube sign and I go to the effect we need. It's called reshape. It's also available, of course, in CS6. So I just drag this reshape effect and I tell this effect, hello YouTube sign. My source mask is of course the YouTube sign, but in the destination we would like to morph to a hat mask. Now what does this effect do? This effect, by moving the percentage, will morph automatically. You see we are not quite there, this is because I should have a bigger PNG image, since this is a very small image like this, it is limited by its barriers, by its actual size, but this is easy to overcome by adding another effect, which is called Grow Bounce. Grow Bounce isn't a perfect effect, but for this PNG it will work like a charm. I just make the bounce bigger and basically it only grows me the size of the actual layer around here. Now you see this actual morphing here is very weird. What we can do to achieve better effects? At first we can add more reference points. You see those correspondence points? If I open it, number of points, number of pairs actually is only one. And this point is morphing here far to the right. I should place it somewhere here. I should alt click to add new points and just click. This will add new reference points. And remember that once we will do the head morphing, because we need to do this twice, one for the first morphing and one for the second morphing, those reference points should be similar because else will grow outside those bounds. So let me make this as simple as possible. I alt click also here. If you are on a Mac, it's option and maybe here and that's enough. This is completely enough for my morphing. I set the keyframe at the beginning at 0% and going maybe two seconds forward, I want it to be morphed 100%. What else can we do to make it a bit more precise? You see this elasticity option. This option determines how fluid the actual animation will be performed. You see this is a bit stiff. We have very rough edges here by making the elasticity to absolutely normal, it will round the corners. For example, you can go even deeper to loose, it will make it even rounder. It all depends of what you want to achieve and what style you are aiming for. You can see this morphing is pretty good now. I can go on and make the same on the head. So remember, the more reference points you use, it will probably make the animation better and better. But since these are only simple PNG images, and we just want a fast morphing between them, you don't have to be really pixel perfect. A few reference points will be totally okay, because you want to finish this project today. Thank you very much for your attention, let's go to the next lesson, where we will crunch on the head, and then we will try to fade both images, so it will create a seamless experience.